Hey everybody, welcome to Passable Media. I'm Adam, and today we're going to be going over the confirmed cameo appearances for this December and January's Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover in the Arrowverse shows. The Arrowverse has gone from strength to strength in recent years, starting with Arrow and slowly branching out into The Flash, Supergirl, Legends of Tomorrow, and most recently Batwoman. Outside of traditional television, there's also The Vixen, Freedom Fighters The Ray, Blood Rush, John Con Noir, Chronicles of Cisco, and the Stretched Scene web series, plus various comic book runs, novels, and even a blog, some of the latter three being canon and others not. Of course, it doesn't stop there. Thanks to the shared multiverse that challenges even the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the Arrowverse cheerfully loops in the 1990s The Flash and the 2014 Constantine show from NBS into its shared history. This is excluding Black Lightning, which for the first two seasons the CW bras have insisted again and again that this does not take place in the Arrowverse, although that certainly seems to be about to change. There's also the Arrowverse series set in the future, which may or may not be called Green Arrow and the Canaries, but that's a wee bit campy, and honestly I'd prefer Arrow 2040 or just the Canaries, or something like that that isn't that. But we've also heard rumours that Stargirl, a previously DC Universe production, might be making its way to the CW instead, which would give us yet another possible Arrowverse show, though like Black Lightning, and given that it's already been shot and just needs trimming to suit the CW's runtimes, we likely won't be getting any kind of crossover in Season 1, and of course this may be total gumpf anyway. And finally, we have Superman and Lois, which may or may not be picked up at this stage, but it's super poorly named. I like the idea of a late-stage Superman show, though I do worry about the inevitable similarities and villain sharing with Supergirl. Anyway, in the comics, Crisis on Infinite Earths was an attempt to simplify years of sprawling multiverses for each and every possibility where a new writer would come in and decide that the story they wanted to tell doesn't match up with the established history, so this is on a new Earth. Albeit temporarily, this crisis wiped out hundreds of heroes including Supergirl and Barry Allen's Flash, and essentially rebooted all of DC Comics continuity. And unlike Superman's various deaths, Barry Allen actually stayed dead for quite a few years, with Wally West becoming an entire generation's one and only The Flash. In theory, something similar will be done with the Arrowverse's interpretation, and with Crisis now being three weeks away, it seems that what we've been fed so far about Oliver Queen's Green Arrow sacrificing himself in place of Kara's Supergirl and Barry's Flash may actually happen, but more than anything we expect the number of worlds to be heavily reduced and histories changed. This is going to be tough for the writers, especially with the likes of Batwoman and Black Lightning, who are relatively young and not quite done with their own world building yet, only to have everything changed. And what on earth is going to happen to Supergirl? Are her characters going to be wordlessly shunted over to Earth-1? We've seen the changes that Flashpoint caused ripple through the Arrowverse and Legends, with events changing slightly and not so slightly, but I don't see how changing Diggle's daughter into a son can be handled with the same level of chill as wiping out several seasons of a show's canon. It's not that I think they can't do it, so much as I'm super interested to see how they do it and what happens in the aftermath. Now onto the cameos themselves. The first is one that everybody should have been expecting from day one, and as I've always considered it to be a part of the Arrowverse despite the studio telling me over and over that it's not, Black Lightning will be appearing in Crisis. At the moment, it seems like it is just Cress Williams appearing and not the rest of the cast, but a confirmation's a confirmation, right? In addition to playing Ray Palmer's The Atom, Brandon Routh will be playing a take on the Kingdom Come version of Superman from the comics a direct run-on to 2006's Superman Returns, and beyond all that, playing off of Ray's comment that Cora looks like his cousin years back. Not to be outdone, Tom Kavanagh will be doing triple duty, playing Harrison Wells, Eobard Thorne, and the new character for this season of The Flash, Pariah. Ryan Choi will be joining Team Flash this season, meaning that Osric Chow will be in the crossover as a series regular, and Audrey Marie Anderson, who has previously played Lila Michaels on Arrow, and other shows, will be playing Harbinger. And whether this is the long-hinted-at alter ego or an entirely new character is as of now unclear, although with the hints in Arrow so far this season it looks to be the same character. John Cryer and Jonathan Shake will be returning to the Arrowverse personas of Lex Luthor and Jonah Hex respectively, and John Wesley Ship will be back, we believe, as the Earth-90 Flash, but he could also be back as Henry Allen or as Earth-3's Jay Garrick or any number of doppelgangers. 
Burt Ward, who played Dick Grayson's Robin in the classic Batman live-action series and film alongside Adam West Batman, and also voiced a bunch of Dick Graysons in the animated form over the years, is in the mix, but interestingly he's not playing Dick Grayson or Robin, whether active or retired. No, he's playing himself. Erica Durance will be reprising her role as Lois Lane from Smallville alongside Tom Welling and his iteration of Clark Kent. We have been told he is not playing Superman, but that doesn't necessarily mean he won't suit up during the crossover. And while rumoured, Michael Rosenbaum has confirmed that he will not be reprising his role as Lex Luthor due to a combination of personal issues and a lack of certainty regarding the script at the time the part was offered to him. Kevin Conroy, who has voiced Batman for almost 30 years, is finally getting his live-action debut as Bruce Wayne during Crisis. Ashley Scott will be returning to the role of Helena Kyle, the daughter of Batman and Catwoman, and the Birds of Prey series version of Huntress. And Stephen Lobo fits an odd role in that he will either be replacing Emmett J. Scanlon as Jim Corrigan's Spectre from the Constantine NBC show, or be playing a new non-Earth-1 version of the character. Getting near to the end now, we have Robert Wall playing somebody. Honestly, we don't know at this point, and a truly surprising appearance of Tom Ellis as Lucifer Morningstar, maybe from Lucifer, although that could just have been a mate turning up to set to say hi to his friends. This does need to be tempered slightly, as it's not 100% confirmed and has been poo-pooed by Tom Ellis himself, but it certainly seems like it could be happening. The reason this is especially unexpected is because Lucifer, while owned by DC, is a Vertigo imprint, which would be tantamount to Rose McCliver's Live More from iZombie swinging by to go a few rounds. Which, honestly, I wouldn't be against. But that's definitely not happening because zombies in Chicago, you know, not happening. There are some pretty surprising cameos here. But the most shocking of all is that reportedly the Titans, as in the Titans from the DC Universe Titans TV show, will be making an appearance. Now, I can't really get into everything I want to say about this without running much longer than I'd like, but just bear in mind that DC have historically been really quite power-hungry when it came to keeping their TV and film franchises apart from one another. And this is a show that's about as official as DC gets, and one that's still active in production, and it getting looped into the Arrowverse, that's a pretty big step for DC following the you-can't-call-him-Joker debacle from Gotham last year. And especially so when compared to the Marvel Studios attitude, who has Kevin Feige actively decanonizing all of the Marvel TV and Netflix MCU shows as not really the MCU. This could actually be DC finally stepping up to the plate. When you take into account that they seem to have finally accepted the audience can delineate between the various Jokers that we see in film as different characters, we could be approaching a time where DC has a true multiverse that leaves the MCU looking rather small by comparison. Of course, with the vast number of cameos, I think it's fairly clear that a lot of these, the Titans one in particular, are going to be brief clips of Earths being engulfed by antimatter. But even if these are just the swan songs of shows that once were, this crossover event is looking to be at least as massive as its comic book counterpart. Thank you for listening. I've been Adam from Passable Media. Please like and subscribe if you're on YouTube, and like and follow if you're on SoundCloud. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, and a whole bunch of other social media stuff. Links in the description down below. As ever, we'll be back again soon.